Okay, brilliant. Well, I think we might as well get started with the introduction. Um, and in a few minutes, Mark, uh, Mark's going to start his workshop. So hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining this first Hospital Rooms Digital Art School. We're really excited to be doing this because we're used to working in inpatient units and we haven't been able to for the last few months. So this is a really great, work, great way that we can continue to um, do creative sessions um, online. This is the first of eight sessions we're going to be doing um, and then we're hoping that that will continue for a while after that. So for at least four months, every Thursday at 2pm, we're going to be leading a session with a different artist uh, and that might be a fashion designer like Giles Deacon who designed Pippa Middleton's wedding dress. Um, that will be in two weeks and Sarah Berman who will be leading a really great um, collage workshop next week. So just in case you don't know who Hospital Rooms is, which is quite likely, we're an arts and mental health charity. We've been going for four years and we bring artists and mental health service users together to do workshops, but also to transform uh, inpatient mental health units with art. Uh, so the example here that you could see is uh, a German artist called Lothar Gertz. The next slide is a beautiful 12 meter long wall painting by Hannah Brown in the Hellingly Centre, a medium secure unit in Sussex. And then the next slide is by Rose Pilkington, who's made this undulating wall painting and printed pieces in a psychiatric intensive care unit in Exeter. One of the artists that we've worked with a lot over the last few years since we started is Mark Titchener. Uh, you, you may well have seen his work, uh, not only in galleries, but all over the country in different places, outdoors and in hospitals and in museums and all different kinds of places. But he's worked on three projects with us. And the first one was in Snowsfield's Adolescent Unit, which is a young people's unit, an adolescent unit in, uh, at Maudsley in South London. And the second project was at a rehab unit in West London, um, called Bluebell Lodge, which is the next slide. Um, and he worked with the, the guys there uh, and created this. Unit in Exeter called Jasmine Lodge, and it's an artwork called Please, uh, sorry, Love Reveals the World. And that he completed last year. And he'll be working on three more projects with us in the coming year in different PQs across London. Um, just a couple of things before we get started. Um, this session is being recorded, but everyone's video and sound is off. Um, so privacy is, is being observed. Um, we're going to be, uh, Mark in a minute's gonna be leading a session. The, I the idea is that you're able to make work while he is. So he, it, you know, the idea is to join in. Hopefully you've got materials with you. If things don't go right straight away, it doesn't matter. There's lots of opportunities to try again. And we're also going to be releasing a 10 minute short video of this that uh, for anyone who wasn't able to take part today so that you could try it out in your unit or at home on another day. Uh, Natalie and Louis are going to be leading things from now on. And at the bottom of your screen, there should be a Q&A button. So you could click on that at any point if anyone wants to ask a question. And later on, uh, Natalie's going to ask Mark these questions out loud and he's going to respond to them. So without further ado, really happy uh, that Mark's leading this first workshop. So over to you, Mark. Sorry. OK, I hope you can all hear me now. Um, yeah, hi, uh, hi everybody. Thanks, Tim, for the introduction. Um, I don't know where you are, but where I am, it's very warm. So we're going to do something which is um, quite kind of calm and relaxing, hopefully, and a bit of fun. Um, I'm learning this process as well, so I'm I'm certainly not an expert. So we, if we make some mistakes, we can make make them together. So I'm filming this in in my front room. 
Um, and I've got all the materials. I'm going to show you what we need. Um, just quickly, Tim showed you a couple of examples of my work and um, a lot of the things that I do involve kind of words and, and text um, and quite kind of detailed backgrounds. And I think the idea with this workshop is to try and do something a bit like that, but to do it in quite a quick way. Um, I've got an example actually. So this is one piece that I have in my house, which is an example of the kind of work that I made with these kind of detailed backgrounds. But for this, we're going to try and do something a bit different. Um, hopefully some of you had a chance um, before to print off some of your own text um, onto some normal printer paper. If you don't have that, you can, we, can just, you, we can do this um, just with plain paper as well. I printed off some pieces like this just on really normal standard home printer paper. And what we're going to do is we're going to do something uh, which is a kind of form of paper marbling called Samina Gashi, which is um, an Eastern version of paper marbling. And we're gonna end up with some sheets of paper that might look a bit like this, or they might look completely different. So every time we do it, it's gonna look completely different. And when we print them onto our sheets of paper, when we put our ink onto our sheets of paper, we'll end up with something like this. So the text and the ima image together on one sheet of paper. So before we get started, I just want to go through what we're going to need. So everyone is going to need two brushes. So I hope you can see these are kind of round brushes with a bit of a point on them. You can use whatever you've got. As I say, this isn't a very precise kind of exercise, so we're going to use whatever materials we have at hand. The other thing we're going to need is some ink. Um, I'm using this calligraphic Chinese ink. You only need a tiny amount. So I've got, that's going to be more than enough. That's probably enough for a whole class because we're using tiny little drops. And the other thing we need is some water. And in that water, we need to put a drop of um, washing up liquid. So just one drop. I'm going to try, make sure that I don't put too much in. There we go. Let's just let that kind of settle. Don't stir it around too much. We don't want any bubbles or anything. Um, the other ingredient that we need is a tray with some water in. So, um, can you switch me over to the other camera? There we go. So that's pro you'll, you'll probably just hear me now um, rather than see me. So this is this is the thing that we're going to be making our prints in. So I've got a metal tray here. I'm just going to fit my piece of paper in. It's got about a centimetre of water in just normal tap water, cold water. Um, and that is pretty much all we need to go. I would, I've got some, I'm quite messy, so I've got a few bits of kitchen towel and stuff around me, just so, um, okay. So I've got one pot here, which is my, um, that one, which is my ink, I'll put that there. And I've got my water, which is here. And what we want to do is we want to take one brush for each pot. Okay, so I'm going to use a slightly larger um, brush in the black ink. And what we want to do is put that into the ink, let it soak in. We don't want it to be dripping kind of off the brush, just lo load it up. And then the same with the water, we're just going to put the brush in the water and get some water on there. So what we're going to do, if you imagine holding your brush kind of almost straight downwards, you can see what I'm doing there. And we're just going to tap the surface of the water gently. We don't want to touch the, we don't want to go down very far. We just want to put the tip of the brush just straight down to the water, which I'm going to do that now. And you probably you can see you get a circle of black ink. We're going to take the water brush then. And we're going to do the same. We're going to put a dot of water right in the middle. Can you see you get a clear dot there? I'm just going to give my water with the um, soap and a little bit of a stir. Then we're going to do the same. We're going to put a drop. And this is basically it. This is what we're going to do. We're going to build up these circles. You can see if I hold my brush in the water like that, it makes a bigger circle. 
we're going to alternate and it's going to build up this pattern now there's no wrong or right way to do this because what we're interested in in a way is something that we can't control very much so you'll also notice if you knock the tray a little bit it will send sort of waves through the water and it will change the way it looks as well as well so that's you know lots of things can happen which are going to kind of be slightly out of our control you can actually if you like do this as a kind of group exercise and give take it in turns take one get let one person have one brush and one the other and sort of build it up as a um a kind of activity like that so you can see it's starting to change the image is starting to appear you can i wish I, I i knew how you guys were getting on with this um hopefully okay i'm just using black ink but there's no reason at all why you couldn't use colored inks as well it'd be really interesting if any of you do have colored inks to see how that comes out because i haven't seen that If you do find you make a mistake, like you, I don't know, drop the brush in there or something happens, just start again. Just wash the, um, get rid of the water and um, just put some fresh stuff in and start again. And that's, I'm, I'm going to have to do that at some point as well. And it only, it's going to take, you know, it's not going to take very long to do that. So really don't worry about it. I'm, I think what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put some more black ink on there. I'm going to start over here. So I want to see what happens because this is going to start pushing the other one over this side, over this side as well. Hi, hi everyone. It's it's Natalie from Hospital Rooms here. Just um, we've had a really nice comment. Someone saying that they're improvising with acrylic ink. Um, so Mark, maybe you could just um, have you have you tried this with acrylic ink? No, I've I to be honest. Oh, I see. I just dropped some water in there. Um, I haven't. I actually I I actually borrowed. I was going to say stole, but I actually um, borrowed this uh, from, this ink from my my partner. So this isn't even my ink. I'm borrowing ink. Um, but I thought I, I quite like kind of black and white and I thought maybe for the doing it on screen, it might kind of be easier to see what we were doing, but I'd be really interested to see what um, you guys come up with, with um, the um, colored ink as well. Uh, and I've got another here. We've got units that are trying acrylic ink. So hopefully we're going to have lots of really beautiful kind of colors um and like we were saying at the end there's going to be an opportunity to upload your work so we're hoping we're going to have a nice online gallery of all of these um so um we've got a question here mark um i'm assuming you could have several ink pots with different colors of ink yeah i can't see why not at all and i think the only thing is probably trying not to sort of mix the ink up so making sure that when you put your um you know water in that you put the um, touch the sort of ink into the sort of black the blank space in the um, um, left by the water, but yeah, I can't see can't see why not at all. I mean, I think if you if you were kind of like if you do this in a very traditional way, you would be um, I don't know. Then you know there would be more rules, but I think I, I what I like about this is is it's just quite you don't really need a lot of equipment. You don't need any. Like with some like traditional marbling techniques, it can get um, quite complicated because you need to put starch and stuff in the water to make it thicker, or you might be using kind of oil-based inks. Um, so this is really just a way of doing something very simple. I might mind starting to do some funny things now because I think I might have um, oh put too much detergent in the water. So oh. I'm gone. Sorry. Just got a few more questions about the ink so maybe i'll just kind of ask these while we're here yeah. so um, we've got some people using calligraphy ink um we've got a question here can you use marbling ink 
Um, there's also someone using fountain pen ink, um, but saying that it isn't working in the same way. Is there anything else I could use? Um, and finally, um, someone saying um, their ink is dropping to the bottom of the tray. Um, I think we tried that with acrylic ink. Um, and yeah. that happened with that one but it actually it worked really really well we did a trial yesterday and it and it worked really well with acrylic ink yeah i haven't used acrylic ink and i know you mentioned that that it would fall it might fall to the bottom um i guess i mean one of the my mine is actually starting to fall to the bottom a bit here it's really weird because some days it does different things um so what i'm going to do in a second is i'm going to finish off this because i don't know if you can say mine's kind of there's a bit of mine that's kind of disappearing. So I'm going to just try and see if I can get, um, you guys can carry on like as long as you like really. Um, I'm going to just try and get a print from this one before it disappears completely. Um, and quickly wash up. One other thing I th what you, that you can do if you like is to um, take the end of your brush and almost you can drag the ink across the water as well and create some kind of nice the mine's I'm sure you're all doing a better job than me because mine's not actually worked very well but I'm going to try anyway and see what I get so I'm going to take one of the printouts that I had I'm going to just place it on top Okay, um, you don't need to leave it in that long, I was just cleaning my brushes up. And you get something that I've actually missed, can you see there, I just missed the corner of the uh, paper with mine. When that dries, it will dry um, a bit more sort of contrasty than it is now. So I'm just going to let that drip down. If you like, you can always you can also try. Um, you see, there's still plenty of there's still ink on the surface of the water, so you can even try if you like to try, um, see what happens getting a second print off of the water. You'll get something a bit more kind of smoky, or so we we'll just try that as well. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly put some fresh water in my tray, so that's come out as very fine. I'm going to quickly. Um, Go and get some water. So do you um, want to take over for a minute, Natalie? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so um, if anyone has any questions about hospital rooms or about the upcoming workshops or about this workshop, um, please feel free to pop them in the Q&A. We're going to answer as many as we can and then we'll be having a little question time with Mark at the end as well. So um, I'm just reading here. Um, so. What I'll do is I'll line up any questions related to this marbling workshop. I will line up when Mark comes back. Um, but if there are any other questions about hospital rooms or what we're doing, um, like Tim said, we've got a workshop every Thursday at 2 p.m. Um, and the next one is with Sarah Berman. Um, so that's going to be a collage workshop. So it's going to be quite, quite different from this one. Um, and then we've got a number Oh yeah, do you need to register? So on the Eventbrite page, um, every single class you can register individually. So that's really helpful for us because it means that we can send you all of the information that you need um, about what you need um, and the link for the Zoom. So um, feel free to register for as many as you like, um, but if you register for each individual class, um, that would be great. Um, Great. So what we're going to do is when Mark comes back, we're going to repeat the whole process um, and we will talk also about the types of inks. So if you've got any questions about the inks that you're using, Mark will just go over uh, the best inks to use. Um, and then what we have is on the online page, we have the materials list for this workshop. So that has a direct link to where you can buy um, the ink on uh, Amazon. So um, and like Tim said at the beginning, we're also going to be releasing little 10 minute videos. So if you can't do it today, you can do it it at some point in the future they're going to be up on YouTube um, for for a long time so everyone can do those um, okay uh, thank you to the someone who has to leave but thanks so much for coming
Um, so Mark, people are asking, we've just got a few questions about if you could just repeat the process. Absolutely, I'm gonna do it again now. Um, to be honest, I made a bit of a mess of that last one, so I'm gonna try and see if I can do it a bit better. I am slightly nervous about doing this, so bear with me. Um, sometimes it goes wrong, and I have no idea why it does that. Um, other times it works just fine. So let's, we're gonna try again. So the process, um, yeah, the two things we need are, uh, which camera are we on, Natalie? Uh, we're, on the front, we're on the front camera. Okay. So the two things we need are our water. So that just has one drop of um, washing up liquid in. And a really small about, I think, like I said, I'm using this um, kind of Chinese, calligraphy ink, but I know people are using all kinds of different things. Um, I guess, we, yeah, be interesting to hear actually, maybe we can put that in the, the comments on the video, what kind of results people get with different sorts of inks, because some of them will um, probably work better than others, and especially with the, the coloured ones. Um, so that's, that's what we need to start, and we are tray of water. Could you switch to the other camera, please? So to confirm then, Mark, the tray of water is just, that's just plain tap water. Yes, yeah, exactly. So I'll show you in a second. So it's basically, I've just filled up another tray of water with about a centimetre of just cold tap water. Um, there we go. So there's nothing, nothing special um, about that. So we've got our water with this, our cup of water, which has got a little splash of um, drop of washing up liquid small amount of ink here and our tray of um, just tap water. And I, I've got this one just because it fits the paper, but there's no reason why you could, if you wanted to make much smaller drawings, you could use things like, um, you know, like you can make very small versions of this, like using things like foil, you know, fast food containers, or there's, there's no reason for it to be this size necessarily. So, very first much. Thing, could you repeat the type of ink that you're using there? So the, yeah, we've got so I'm using uh, this ink, which is a this one here, which is a Chinese calligraphy ink, um, which I think you can get pretty pretty readily available from. I think you can you can definitely get it from art shops and from um, Amazon, for instance. So to start with, we're gonna load up our um, brush with, with some ink. Not too much, we don't, do we, we don't want it kind of dripping off of it. It's just, um, and then we're gonna do the same with our water, brush with the water, just, put, just dip it into the water. Then we're gonna hold the brush as kind of vertical as we can, I suppose, and then we're just gonna tap the surface of the water. We don't wanna go re really beneath the water surface if we can, we certainly don't wanna to touch the bottom. And you'll see when that happens, we get this kind of round uh, circle pit. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to tap my water in the middle of that circle. And you see a white circle up here. And you notice the longer you hold the, water, the brush in the water, the bigger the circle is. You see that? And we're just going to keep repeating this, building up these circles. If you were like, if you want, you could do this really quickly and build it up really faster. You can take your time. I, I actually just like it as a process, so quite happy to do it quite slowly. You end up with something which looks a bit like a, um, you know, like when you chop a log in half and you can see the kind of rings of it. But as the water moves, the shape of it changes. And that's what's quite interesting to me is the fact that we don't really know what we're going to end up with. This could be, you might get to a bit and you think, oh, that looks great. And then you can, you can print at that point. You can, when I say print, all we're, going to, all we're doing is just putting our water, um, a piece of paper onto the surface of the water and letting it catch the ink. So I'm gonna try, I didn't do very well last time. What I wanna do this time is to try and fill the surface of the water a bit um, with a bit more pattern. So that's looking, I, 
that's not looking too bad up there. So I'm going to try and I'm going to start on another bit of the pot now. See what happens. We're having um, so I'm um, just reading out some of the comments here. Um, someone saying that maybe the air temperature makes a difference to the ink. It might well. I mean, it's really really hot in London. Yeah, but what it's like for everyone else but can you hear me if i if i'm speaking now yes hi tim hi hi yeah the um one thing that does happen with um sound mix is if it if it's too hot in the room which it probably is the viscosity changes so that will have an effect so it might be worth trying it again when it's not 33 degrees outside the other thing you could try is if you're using an acrylic ink is slightly watering down the ink so put just a little bit of water and mix it with your ink um, because of the weight of the the weight of the binder in that ink, it might allow it to sit on the surface a bit longer, especially if it's this hot. Um, so it might be worth giving that a go now. And the other thing is to to keep trying now, but then just try it on a day when it's probably ten degrees cooler. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, also, you know, if the t the temperature of the water affects things, um, I mean, I guess these are all things that you. We, you can experiment with but I feel a bit like it's not really worth worrying too much because we don't really know so let's you know see see what we get um, I must say that this is even I did some te tests yesterday and they were kind of completely different to this um, I don't know why so I'm gonna make a couple of big blobs I'm just oh You can probably see over there, can you see that there's a bit of a cloud of ink there? That's where I've, I've touched the water um, too deeply and it's um, dropped down to the bottom. So I'm getting that problem as well. Uh, we're having, um, so some comments here, um, there's a unit using half plastic trays and half metal trays and the metal seems to make the ink sink. Oh, that's so interesting. Maybe that, that could also be, we're all kind of experimenting here. <laughs> <laughs> it's all of us. Um, and there's just a question here, Mark. I wonder if you could just um, repeat. So, do you put a brush of ink in followed by a brush of water? Yeah. So I'll start again. So over here in this sort of clear area, I'll, I'll start a new a new bit. So I'm going to put a drop of ink into water, which makes us a nice circle like that. And then I'm going to put a drop of the water with the detergent, and you see that makes a white circle. And then we're just alternating. See, I think there's a time limit to this as well, because what sort of, after a certain amount of time, the ink starts to kind of go a bit grayer. And maybe my idea that you could just take as long as you want isn't in, entirely um, right, or maybe that's just one of the problems with uh, metal trays. So I've got a lot of um, kind of empty tray in, in uh, what I'm doing here. There's more white than I'd like. I'd like to have more of the kind of ink. Um, there's a question here about um, a list of items needed for each workshop. So we're going to be um, bringing out the materials list for the next workshop tomorrow and then we're going to be doing our best to give people as much notice as they can um, and everything is going to be listed on the Hospital Rooms website on the Digital Art School tab and also on Eventbrite. Um, so the online event page that you saw today is going to be constantly updated with new links, um, a Zoom link to next workshop, materials list. So if you can just keep checking back to that, um, we're also going to be emailing people um, a link. And what we're going to be doing is some of you have asked for the materials list in the Q&A. So um, Louis is going to be replying um, with that link so that you've, you've got it there. Right, I'm going to, mine's starting to break down a bit. So what I'm going to try and do is to um, take a print now, which I'll show you again. What I'm going to do is I want to try and, um, a lot of, I've got quite a lot of gaps in mine. So I'm almost going to try, this is cheating, maybe this is cheating, maybe it's not, but I'm almost going to try and move some of this ink together so that 
I can cover the whole sheet of paper. Okay, so I'm going to try again. I didn't do very well last time, so fingers crossed this is any better. Um, so all we do when we when we take the print, as it were, is to just lift the um, put a piece of paper onto the water, let it sit there, and then lift it up. You can let it drain off a little bit. So that's a bit better than the last one. That looks so good. A bit different. Great. Still, yeah, doing some slightly odd things today. I think maybe it is, maybe it is the temperature. Um, so I am going to go and change the water again. Is that, should I do another run through? Uh, let's see. I mean, if pe we can definitely, we've definitely got time for another run through. So maybe that would be, that would be helpful, third time's a charm. Exactly, well I still haven't got a very good one, so I'm gonna quickly go and get some more water and then I'll be back for the third, third time is lucky. Uh, so let's have a look. Oh, so we've got some really lovely comments, someone saying that it's, they've tried again and it's worked really well, that's fantastic. Um, what else here? Uh, what did Mark do differently this time, the second time? So we're going to try a third time. Um, so if anyone's got any questions about any part of the process, just feel free to pop it in the comments. Um, comments saying people they are going to do it at a later date and they really like Mark's style. Thanks so much. Any feedback is really, really good. Um, so using calligraphy ink, um, that seems to sort of work too but like we said um, we'd love to see the kind of work that people are making so if you're able to anonymously upload um, pictures of your uh, work it would be fantastic and we're going to do an online gallery with everything so please send us um, the Dropbox link will be emailed to you and it is also on the online event page. Let's see if there's any others here. Um, so pen ink, we think possibly might not work as well, but we'll ask Mark when he's back. Um, so yeah, like we said before, there's going to be, um, all of these are going to be available on YouTube um, to watch anytime you like. And the shorter version is going to be 10 minutes. Um, so really quick, um, you can email them to anyone. Um, they'll be available um, on, on our website and on YouTube. Um, and at the end of this session, there's going to be a really, really quick survey. Um, just a couple of questions about if you had any, um, your, just your experience today and how you found it. And then that means we can apply it to the upcoming workshop. So any feedback will be gratefully received. Um, so I think Mark is about to come back. Does you, Mark use a special printer ink that doesn't run in water? Um, I will ask Mark, I think he just used normal copy paper, really cheap, like run of the mill copy paper that you get for your printer. And I think normal, uh, normal. Uh, so Mark, we've just had a question about the ink that you've used to print. Yeah. Um, is it, you've just used sort of copy paper? Oh yes, yeah. So what I've done is I've used um, um, just the, the the printer that I have at home. So it's just a sort of stand. It's just a like normal Canon sort of home printer. So there's nothing um, particularly clever about that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, when I first tried it out, I was a bit surprised. I thought the ink would run everywhere, the water, but apparently it's it's fine. So what I've done is I have because um, the last one was a bit funny. Um, I've changed my glass of water. I've got a new glass of water, so I need to just put some of the um, washing up liquid in that again, just a blob of that. Because um, I wondered whether that was part of the problem. Um, and so, yeah, hopefully, third time lucky. So, just to start with again, I've got my tray of water. Um, I've got this metal one. Um, I've got a glass of water, regular um, tap water just with a um, drop of washing up liquid and I've got a small pot of ink and I'm using this 
Chinese calligraphic ink, but I know some of you are using different things. Um, I've got two brushes. One is going to be for my water and one is going to be for my ink. And I'm going to put, can you switch to the other camera, please? Okay. Mark, we've just um, quickly we've just had a question um, about the, this process and the name of this process and how you how you found out about the process. Oh, I'm muted on this. Oh, using muted. Okay, so the the real kind of name of this process is saminagashi, which is a I believe it's, it's a sort of traditional Japanese form of paper marbling, um, and I just came across it because someone I knew was uh, uh, was showing it, um, but they were doing it as a kind of way of keeping, you know, calm and just a sort of nice restful kind of exercise. And I liked the fact that it looked like something that you could do um, without too much equipment. Um, and also, you know, not, not loads of different sorts of ink. And actually, that even if you didn't really get a good result, the actual process itself was quite good fun to do. So that's why I wanted to have a go at it. And as I say, because I'm interested in sort of how text sits on these kind of backgrounds, it was a, almost a way of quite quickly um, making something similar to what I do normally on a computer, but doing it using, using ink. So I'm gonna have a go at another, um, the third, third one. So I'm gonna, are we on the other camera now? Okay. Yep, we're on. Okay, so I'm gonna just, I've just filled the, my um, brush up with the black ink. I'm just gonna put a dot of that in the water. And then I'm gonna put a dot of my water in there. You can see we've got a black circle with a white one in the middle. And then we're gonna just keep repeating that process. I might try and do it a bit quicker this time because I think last time, oh, so that's what I get for doing it quicker. I've just made a mistake. So I was wondering whether it didn't work so well last time because I was quite slow, but obviously I don't want to make a mess of it. I imagine if you are really good at this, it's something that's very precise. It's a sort of Zen exercise. I'm sure if you put this on YouTube, people will say that guy doesn't know what he's doing, which is true. Um, but I like the idea of something that we can kind of learn at together. Yeah. So, so this looks quite different to the last one already. Yeah. We've just had some more comments from people that are, are doing this as they go along. Um, so there's a lady here who's used a black bowl at the beginning, a bit of an error as she couldn't see the patterns. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like um, the sort of thing that I would do. Um, but people saying that it's really therapeutic. Um, and I think it's like you say, it's, it's lovely that you can do it every time and it's different. Yeah, I mean, look, can you see how different this one is to the last one? Um, so with this one, I'm keeping my brushes really not very far from the surface. And trying to build up the image a bit quicker. And what I have done, which isn't very clever there, is like you can see the water moving around a bit. I've jogged the, water, jogged the tray. So I suppose if you can do it out touching the tray. Um, lovely this comment here, someone saying third time lucky. I got the calligraphy ink to work by dropping it into the water rather than touching it. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, it's really, I mean, it's strange, isn't it? Because I guess we're all doing something very similar, but all getting very different results. I've just dropped mine into the water there. That's all right. I've got two bits on the go now. So I think it actually it does kind of work a bit better if you do it a bit faster, which is probably to do with the fact that the ink doesn't have so much time to kind of um, 
dispersing the water. So what I'm going to do, I guess, quite soon is try and take a print from this one. Um, I'm just going to do a bit up here, see if I can... This is normally where I, it goes wrong when I try and do a second bit. bit. So I'm concentrating now, I'm not talking so much. <laughs> Should have probably started concentrating at the beginning. Yeah, just a couple more questions coming through. Um, so someone's saying, is any kind of washing up liquid okay? Yeah, absolutely. I think it, you could probably use soap as well. So yeah, see what I, had, I did there? I, put, I had a nice drawing and I put a big blob of ink in and it's uh, moved it all. Um. Some really nice comments, people following along and really enjoying it. Thank you so much. Um, okay. And obviously, Mark, you're going to be working with us when things are kind of back up and running. You're going to be working with us on, on several projects. Yeah, that's right. Ho hopefully not too far off. Yeah, I can't see, I mean, almost in a way, the actual printing thing's really nice, but I think you can't, you, you, you can also just see how this would be quite a nice activity to do just to relax, just put on some quiet music or something and uh, just do this. Um, just another question, I think someone's just joined us. Um, how much washing up liquid went into the glass of water? Um, so it was just one drop of washing up liquid, so hardly any at all. So I think I might try and take a print there because there's some sort of funny things starting to happen. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm not going to touch the water um, like I did last time with the brush. I'm going to just do, so I'm going to have, try it about there. So that was interesting because I think it was kind of working better when I um, did it a bit more quickly that time. And then I made a mistake and put a big blob of ink in it. But just so I'm just shaking off the excess wall. You have to be a bit careful when you take it out of the water because um, it's the paper because it's quite thin. Like like um, Matthew was saying, I, I just used it's actually kind of the cheapest copy paper you can get. Um, so it's super thin. So when it comes out, you have to be a little bit careful because the paper can be a bit fragile. So yeah, uh, there's someone here putting them up on their washing line. Oh, that's a good idea. They'll dry in a second out there. <laughs> so I think the first, this is the first one that we did, which is kind of dried off pretty well. Now you can see, do you remember I said I missed the print a bit on that one? I got managed to get the ink off, off to one edge. So you see when it dries up, the kind of the white bits of the paper become more um, white again. So like that. So yeah, I'll be really curious to see what you guys have come up with because I'm sure we've all got lots and lots of different things. And also the other thing I don't know is what you have, if, if you've been writing your own messages on the paper, what they are and how they look. So it'd be really good to um, see those as well. Okay. Absolutely. Wow. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Mark. Um, I guess there's maybe just a couple of minutes if anyone's got any questions that they'd like to ask um, just before we, we go. Like we say, this is being recorded and um, a shorter version is going to be available. So if you've missed anything, um, there'll be ways to access it. But if there's just if there's any other quick questions, otherwise I will pass back to Tim, who's just going to, uh, who's just going to finish up for today. Mark, thank you so much. 
that was brilliant. It was such a good start to the digital art school. And thanks to everyone who's joined. It's so good to see so many people from all over the country and so many units all joining in at the same time. Uh, there's just a couple of things before we go. Um, when, when this Zoom link finishes, you'll automatically be sent a, a survey. It's an anonymous survey. If, you, if you're up for filling it out, it's eight questions and we'd be really grateful if you could do that. Um, there's also in a couple of days, you're going to get an email that will have a Dropbox link. So if you take pictures of the artworks you made today and you upload them, uh, please put them on there. And if you want to in the file name, put the unit or your name, that's great as well. Uh, and we'll, sh we'll send them to Mark so that he could see them too. And we'll start a kind of online gallery over the coming weeks. And then finally, uh, we'll also be updating the event page with all the details for Sarah's workshop that's next week. Uh, we'll send PDFs that you could print off and there's not a huge amount of materials you'll need, but we'll send that link. If you're a mental health unit, we're going to send all the printed materials and all the paper materials for the next workshop to you by post at the beginning of next week. So we'll, in that email, we might ask you to send your unit's address and we'll post them all on Monday so that by the time the workshop comes around, you'll have all the surfaces to work on. Um, but I think that's it. And we really hope you could sign up to some more of the workshops we're doing and we'll hope to see you again next week.